What do you feel like getting going tomorrow? Year three, and uh, the anticipation probably has never been higher. Uh, there's a, a benchmark, if you will, a standard uh, that we set that now put us in a position uh, to go for those goals. You know, back-to-back -back years where we qualified in, in two years and was able to move on in one, and this year to really put yourself in position to take that, ne that next step in year three, and so uh, hopefully we can uh, reap those benefits now. Frank, do you sense just being around the players that there's a, throughout the summer, the guys I talked to said they have this, hey, you know, we're, we're driven by the fact that we didn't get, we won six games last year, we didn't get uh, selected to go to a bowl. Uh, obviously they say, hey, it's on them, we should have won more games and stuff, but they don't say, they say they don't want to feel like that again. I mean, do you, do you sense that, that that sense I of do, commitment? I do, I uh, do. You know, our theme this year is uh, uh, start fast, finish strong. And uh, in years in the past, we've wanted to, to start well, and other years we've said finish. Uh, but to go from beginning to end is what we're, uh, we're going to try to get done this year, not just at the back end to come on and play well or, or to start fast, uh, but to play a complete game uh, from the beginning until the end, 60 minutes uh, of getting a job done. How does a coach get a player to play for a full 60 minutes? Uh, I think in practice preparation, you do those things. Uh, the anticipation of, of the moment, it, it's built up in, on the sound or the start of the game with the kickoff, uh, you you start in that manner. A manner that, that demands and that uh, have prepared players to be equipped with starting fast. And then a practice or a game situation where it's consistent, and consistency becomes the key to do it and play in and play out and not have those laps in between. Although the reality of a football game, you'll have highs and lows to remain constant, not to get too high, not to get too low, but to keep yourself poised in position to finish a job at home. But you won six games last year, six games the year before. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a difference because you look back last year, you lose five games, you lose five points. Yeah. Uh, Six games isn't enough. Uh, that's the standard. That's the benchmark. We're beyond that. We're beyond. Uh, you know, we became bowl eligible. We won six games. That won't get anymore. And that's something we placed upon ourselves. Um, and then those games, as you alluded to, in the fourth quarter, there were several of them uh, that were in the balance in the fourth quarter. All of them, to be quite honest with you, where none was more than a 14-point uh, lead or behind at any point. Uh, of the season, so we played. Uh, we played good, but right now, good isn't good enough for us. But we have to play better to win those games. Well, Frank, what, uh, what, uh, as far as how confident are you, uh, even without a quarterback in there that's been settled, uh, to get the offense jump started again? You know, you only scored six points last two games. Obviously, new offensive coordinator. How, how, how are you feeling for the offense going in? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm confident in this team. I'm confident in our personnel. Uh, there's work that needs to be adhered to because. We're not an offensive unit that have played together. And so there's some cohesiveness, some chemistry that needs to uh, to bear itself. Uh, and, and we'll spend this month doing that in preparation uh, for the kickoff. And then to continue to do that for 11 uh, weeks in a row beyond that. Frank, you got four quarterbacks lined for the starting row. Just what are your expectations out of those four guys to start cap? To have all four of them prepared to be the starter uh, in case it happens. Uh, to, to go out and fill the team that don't have reservations about what we're doing because uh, we're worried about if that guy goes down, the next may not be capable. A year ago, uh, we had some transition or attrition, should I say, at the quarterback position. And so Dalton was, was the veteran player, and we had two true freshmen behind him. And we uh, were on pins and needles and didn't want to lose him. And so you're always conscientious of those things. And, uh, I think right now we have enough personnel that we can build not only a starter but quality depth at that position group to allow us to go out and play fearless. You brought up Dalton. I, I'm just wondering what your thoughts on him is as he's playing in Cowboys camp right now and trying to make that roster spot. Yeah, excited for him. He was here a week ago training with our, our team uh, and just hanging out with the guys, came to Top Golf to our team building event. And, uh, just good to see him. So happy for him. So deserving of a young man who overcome a lot of adversity. He's very talented, and uh, his hard work have put him in position 
uh, to achieve, and hopefully he can make that team and be a contributor uh, in the years to come for the Cowboys. Frank, how important is it for that defense? I mean, defense played real well last year throughout the season. How important is it for them to come out strong, come out hard, fast, because of the offense is going to take a little time maybe to come together? You know, I think uh, from a team approach, we're a team that's very conscientious of one another. We don't go out and, uh, and play football irregardless to the other unit. I think some of the success we had as a defense a year ago was a direct complement of what we did as an offense and, and, man, and clock management and the things that we did in number of snaps. I mean, there were several games we played. The defense played less than 50, 60 snaps. That's unheard of in today's football. And that attribute to us having the success that we had and some capacity. Uh, you know, I expect that defense to be able to play well. I expect our offense, our special teams, uh, to be responsible to one another in the things that we're doing. Uh, but we'll be uh, a much more aggressive offense in, in this year, uh, in this season right now. From the day you came in to where you are now, just how has this program evolved under your watch? Yeah, I, I think, you know, what we spoke about earlier, we, we talk about six, win, six wins, and two years ago, three years ago, that was excitement. Yeah. You know, you bowl out when you get six. Uh, that's not good enough anymore. I think the standard uh, is higher, uh, which is a beautiful thing, and, and we wouldn't want it any other way. Um, I think the, the brand of ball we play, the style of ball we play, the type of personnel that we're getting uh, here now allows us uh, to reach for the stars and, and to, to want to take that next step. Uh, so excited about the direction of our program. How about the division race? What's the division race? How do you look, how do you how do you see it? Uh, UTSC against everybody. <laughs> you know, those guys in, in each one of their programs, respectively, are going to do the things necessary for them uh, to be in position to win football games. Uh, you know, we'll deal with that at, at the time it comes. I think it's a very uh, competitive conference. I think it's a well-coached conference. I think it's a very talented conference from top to bottom. Uh, you look at you know some of the guys in this staff uh, in this conference right now. Uh, whether you're talking about, you know, FIU, FAU, uh, Louisiana Tech, Middle Tennessee, you got some of the best and brightest minds in college football in this conference right now that have coached at the National Football League and every in Power Five schools as well. So, uh, a well-coached conference, a very disciplined, talented conference, uh, and we're, uh, we're we're right in the middle of it. And, uh, we're ready to, to compete. Frank, the preseason media poll had you guys pick pretty low in the West Division. Is that bulletin board material for your team? I think it's fair. I think it's fair when you see uh, a year ago and our inability to finish games. Uh, you know, I wouldn't pick us number one based on what we did last year. Uh, it's probably fitting. It's, it's our job to go out and play the game to control our own destiny. And so, yeah. Speaking of coaching, uh, offensively, what can UTSA fans are they going to change? Is going to be more subtle? Are they going to be more multiple? You know, with UOC or what's, is there going to? Will fans be able to tell the difference? Uh, certainly. Yeah, we're going to do exactly every play we did last year. Same, yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Just don't get the world what we're doing. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be exciting. We'll, we'll do some things that are different. You're gonna be more multiple. I guess that's what I was trying to get to be more multiple. Yeah, we'll be exciting. We'll, we'll do some things that uh, that that people uh, will be entertaining. People will like the style of ball that we're playing. Um, uh, you also have the players on campus right now. The coaches are on campus. Um, young coaches. Young coaches. <laughs> okay. Okay. If yeah. you had to pick a player. The best roommate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, of all the guys. Probably Blaze Moorhead. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Why is that? Uh, he's probably the neatest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's a very mature young man and responsible. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what's the polar opposite of that? <laughs> uh, the, the worst would probably be one of our young offensive line. Oh, okay. Who doesn't understand neatness or etiquette, you know, things of that nature. Yeah, they got some things to learn, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a neat guy. I don't, I don't like sloppy. Sometimes uh, some of those guys can be a little sloppy. Uh, to go to Tempe and, and, and play well as a quality football team, I like us. I like our chances. Uh, you know, I think it, it gets no easier. 
with the team from Baylor that will come to the Alamo Dome. Uh, I would anticipate wanting the redemption. Uh, and a, a well-coached team, a talented football team that will be much improved as they did throughout the duration of the season. Uh, and then they go to Manhattan, Kansas, and they play against a legend like Coach Schneider and his uh, teams that have always been uh, well coached and very talented. And then we look forward to a conference, uh, as I spoke about, that's uh, very even uh, from top to bottom, talent and coaching, where we'll have our work cut out. Uh, so we'll have to play well, we'll have to develop early and uh, develop some depth that will allow us to go through the duration of the season. Um, but I like our chances, I like our program, and I'm very confident in that we could have success. Frank, is what's going on up in Ohio State, does that drive home uh, the point uh, to you as a head coach and all of the head coaches, just the tremendous responsibility. I mean, guys look at you as just the head coach, but yeah. tremendous responsibility you have, you know, not only to the players, but to the guys on the staff. And, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's not something that, uh, it's interesting uh, because we're not just football coaches, we're life skill coaches with our players. And, uh, you know, even in a day like yesterday, uh, dealt with issues from parking tickets uh, to a young man who, you know, had to sit in the office with me as his parents called to tell him of a, 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 a surprise death in their family, and another with academics, and another with uh, girlfriend issues. You, you have all those things that happen, so it's a it's a delicate a delicate balance that you'll have to keep, uh, and with the responsibility of your coaches. Uh, it's a real one. You know, you go out and you try to hire professional men uh, who understand the, the job at hand, and then you have a responsibility of creating that culture and being accountable to the culture of your program. Uh, I'm not uh, quite sure of everything that's going in. I saw a little bit as some of my young guys mentioned it to me today, but we, I had my hands full with our, with our own issues here on yesterday, uh, trying to resolve preparation for this day, so uh, I'm not at liberty to talk too much about it, uh, but the little that I know, what an assistant coach that was, didn't come forward, but it, it's a real responsibility and accountability of not just the head coach, but each one of those individuals to conduct themselves in a, a manner that's becoming of our university. But does that tell you where our society is now? The Urban Meyer, you know, one of the icons of college football, so administratively, because they say he maybe should have said something about it, and he... They're even saying he, he may lose his job, may not, may not get stuff and all this. He just got to tell you where it's almost zero tolerance. That that's not going to be violence against women. It's not going to be tolerated. Yeah, uh, you know, domestic violence, those, those type of things, uh, they're tough. You know, you, you have to answer for them. You uh, have to answer to them, not just to your administration, but to uh, to society as a whole and our, our real responsibilities of this job title. Thanks, Coach.